This game's shit. You're welcome. Now go play Crash Bandicoot. That's what I should have done. I warned you. <laughs> Do you want me to stop this car? Do you? Do you want to walk home? You really gonna walk? But that was just an empty threat. This is Micro Machines World Series. Ugh. Welcome to Micro Machines. No. No. That. No, no, no. That isn't him. That is not him. That is not him. That is definitely not him. There is no way in hell that that could possibly be it's him. <sighs> okay, Brian Blessed is the kind of guy that you get to voice your epic boss about halfway through your action RPG. You don't get him to narrate your shitty ass racing game. He's right, you know. Miss Highland! I am King of Carnage of the Contiff! I'm quite capable of making my own decisions! Then please hurry! Varunic! We'll release the slaves and then on to death! Varunic! I'm sorry about the noise, he does so enjoy his work. Just go! Just go! See, that's how you use Brian Blessed. You give him a script, he'll be chewing for weeks. Okay, let's see what the game's like. As if I hadn't made it obvious already. In a word, shit. I already said that, it's worth saying again. The first thing you'll notice is there are 12 vehicles. 12? 12? This game is licensed by Hasbro because they own Micro Machines. Hasbro, a, a toy manufacturer. You know, I used to have some Micro Machines when I was younger. I'm pretty sure I had more than 12. Yeah, there's more than 12. Okay, okay, so the gameplay. What's so bad about it? Well, the camera is useless for a start. The top down view prevents you from seeing what's ahead meaning you have to memorise the track to stand half a chance of staying on it. You know, I once played a racing game around at a friend's house, and one of the tracks on there was the 24-hour race at Le Mans. You know, that one where they go for 24 hours straight. Same car, same team, several drivers because it's 24 hours. But anyone who's ever seen the 24-hour Le Mans will know that because they go for 24 hours, it gets dark. And on that track with that race, it goes, it doesn't just go dark, it goes pitch black. And I know playing it in a game is not the same as doing it in real life, but even so, even in the game, I couldn't see where I was going unless there happened to be a racer in the distance, you know, with headlights and rear lights that I could follow. But once, once they were out of sight, you just had to aim for corners and hope that they were still there from last time. You just had to aim blindly and hope that your memory wasn't faulty. That's the entirety of this game. Make micro, every single track in Micro Machines World Series is like that, because you can't see any further than that far ahead of you. During battles and races, the camera stays on you and you alone. However, illumination is different. Elimination requires you to keep up with the leader or get left behind and explode, because you're too far away. But the camera doesn't always follow the leader properly. If the leader veers off the track, or does or does not use a shortcut, it can confuse the camera and system as to who's in the lead. Three, two, one, go! Elimination! God damn it, I tried to take a shortcut. Three, two, one, go! I avoided the shortcut that time. Do you know what the problem is? You can't race where you want to race. You have to follow the leader's tyre marks. You've got no alternative. 
three, two, one, go! Hey, you want to go? Guess not. The camera's okay in the other modes, battle and racing, but it's still the wrong angle. You know, for years I was actually complaining to myself about Metal Gear Solid having that top-down camera angle the entire time. I started to think that Kojima didn't actually know any other camera angle. He'd been shown the one camera angle by someone and they'd gone, right, this is what you want to do. And it took, like, years for anyone to suggest Maybe you want to try that. It, it wasn't until like MGS4 that they finally freed up the camera angle. It was like, look at this, I can point the camera there. Or there. <laughs> or there. Uh, but for ages, I wondered why they didn't change the camera angle. And I know why the camera angle was like that in the first place. It's because the old games used to be top-down views. It, that was all you had. The graphics were limited at the time. So you couldn't do anything else. That was back in the day. There's no excuse nowadays. There's no excuse. Another major problem, the handling. Three, two, one, go! Oh my God. Yeah, I know, I'm doing what all racing gamers do. This. Never give up. It doesn't help. It's like someone pulls the handbrake every time you turn a corner. Or, to put it another way, it's like driving constantly on ice. Or, to put it another way, it's like your car's been permanently set up for drifting and you've been given a set of really slippery tyres. You've got no grip and no downforce in a racing game. For crying out loud, you get tapped by another driver and you fly off into the wall which is very easy to do because a lot of the raceways have narrow areas. This is assuming there's a wall there, of course. Often there isn't, there's just a drop. And you get tapped frequently because the AI is rubbish at staying on course. It steers at random and sometimes doesn't even bother following the course. You'll have a lot of races with AI opponents because there isn't many players online. Elimination seems to be the only mode you get mostly players. Most of the time you'll be lucky if you get two other humans involved. By the way, most games, if you didn't have enough players, the game would refuse to start. This at least doesn't have that problem. In fact, most games start within a minute, or two at most, so at least the matchmaking is quick. So, just to summarise, the camera doesn't let you see where you're going, and the super slippery handling means you've got less chance of getting there. Oh joy! As I've said, Elimination is about keeping up with the leader, and or leaving everyone else behind. Leaving people behind earns you points, while getting left behind yourself causes you to lose them. The better your performance, the further to the right your line moves on the scorecard. Get to the chequered area first, and you win. The race mode is a straight 5 lap race, first past the chequered flag wins. This game mode doesn't last very long, 3 to 4 minutes at best. You don't get a chance to get invested in each race before it's over. The third and last game mode is Battle. 6v6 matches of either Cap the Flag, King of the Hill or Bomb the Base. In Battle mode, each vehicle has slightly different handling. The handling is not as much of an issue here since you're not racing and the areas are more open plan. 
In addition, each vehicle comes with its own primary weapon, two special abilities and an ultimate. So let me get this straight. Battle mode has vehicles which handle slightly differently and has different durabilities. Each vehicle has a primary weapon, support powers and an ultimate. Game modes have you contest single objectives at a time. Support powers are shown on screen inside circles with their descriptions. Completing a match gets you XP, earn enough XP to level up at which point you earn a loot box. Opening a loot box gets you 4 randomised items for various characters. Sometimes you get cash, sometimes you get a duplicate item which the game converts to a bit of cash for you to spend on whatever you want. Unlocks include voice lines, skins and icons to paint on the environment. Did the developer have any original thoughts when making this game? It even has a healer unit with an energy stream as its main and resurrect as its ultimate. I mean, I can come up with loads of ideas just sitting here. I mean, for example, the cars, the handling is crap. The handling needs to be way better, not just skidding out at every first opportunity. Now, if you wanted to include some of the other vehicles from Micro Machines, you could, for example, do bikes. You know, you could have the handling of the bikes like, if you go faster, then turning sharper causes you to skid out and lose control, then. And in the sense that you fall over, because obviously it's a bike and you've got to be careful with stuff like that. Things like boats. Boats. You could have had a race around a, a bath or a sink or a kiddie's playing pool. You know, and you could have had things like speed boats that actually go in the direction they're pointed or regular boats, which which do indeed actually drift around corners. When I say regular boats, I mean slower boats, obviously. But slower boats do actually drift around corners on the water. I've done it myself, actually, once. And aeroplanes, helicopters. You could have them... You could have them flying, like, through a garden. And it's like a lawnmower has been through the deep grass and cut the grass down shorter. So the blades of grass are on both sides of you pending you in and that's where the track is. Those are the markers for the track and you fly around there or fly through a chandelier or something high up. You know, it doesn't take a genius to come up with these kind of ideas. I just, they didn't bother. I will admit I had some fun with this early on, but it's just, it, they put the minimum amount of effort in. They didn't bother trying to make the game any bigger than they thought it was necessary. This, this just strikes me as a cash grab. There was no marketing for this game that I saw. As far as I'm concerned, the only reason that I spotted this game in the first place is because I was looking for something to review. Good God. <sighs> the final score for Micro Machines World Series is a 3 out of 10. It's just... It's just a bad game. It's a bad ge bad game. Bad game. Bad developers is more like it. It's just, it's low effort and it's just not worth your time or your money. At 25 quid, this is a massively overpriced for what you get. Maybe eight or 10 quid, 10 quid maximum. Okay, I'd say eight quid and even then, I'd be because there's almost no one playing it. So that's Micro Machines World Series. Yay, three out of 10 bad game, don't bother. Uh, next game review, I couldn't find anything current that I actually wanted to do or thought was worth doing. So I'm gonna revisit a game that everybody already knows is awesome, Horizon Zero Dawn. I just wanna do a review for it and I have to fill that two week slot with something. I just want to do it because I miss. There was a spate of really awesome games that came out at once. You know, there was Neo, Near Automata, Horizon Zero Dawn, Persona 5. I started doing reviews at the end of that group, so I chose to do Persona 5. But now I'm getting back around to those ones, so I'm going to do Horizon Zero Dawn, and then I believe it's Hellblade: Senua's Sacrifice right afterwards. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but. If I have or haven't, I will probably see you then sometimes.